Hello, in this short video, we'll cover the new features in Fast and Safeti 8.9 to model CO2 buried pipeline ruptures. The modeling of CO2 buried pipeline ruptures in Fast and Safeti has been reviewed in detail over recent months. First, we'll recap the modeling available in version 8.71 and the interim guidance we issued on how best to model such buried pipeline ruptures. Then we'll move on to the new modeling available in version 8.9 specifically the revised post crater source for the UDM and the new near field dispersion model. We'll look at how these new models validate against the kosher rupture experiments. And finally, we'll talk about applicability. When exactly are these new models used? So just to recap, this is one of the kosher experiments that's been the focus of our validation efforts. It was a steady release rate of dense phase CO2 that lasted 170 seconds. The fracture length was 3.3 meters, which you can see in the center of the screen there, along with the crater it generated. On the right of the screen, you can see the visible cloud at three times after the release, 10, 30, and 120 seconds. Of particular interest here is the third image, where the visible cloud appears to be spreading pretty evenly in all directions around the release. When we tried to model this in FAST 8.71, we found it behaves nothing like what we see in the experiment. FAST here predicts a vertical jet, which goes quite a distance downwind, diluting all the way before touching down. We concluded that the exit velocity here is much too high to reproduce the experiment and we issued interim advice to convert ruptures to user-defined sources and to reduce the velocity by a factor of three. FAST 8.71 relies exclusively on the cleaver model to generate a source term for the UDM. This essentially allows us to represent the complex interaction between the emerging upstream and downstream pipe flows and the crater as a single pseudo source leaving the crater. The model gives correlations to predict the total momentum loss and air entrainment at the crater exit plane, which allows a UDM source to be calculated. This, however, consistently predicts the higher crater exit velocities, which lead to poor reproduction of the experiments. So this was the first area we've had to take a look at for FAST 8.9. For FAST 8.9, we've introduced the defined area model. This does a similar job to the cleaver model in defining a pseudo source, but we've approached it in a slightly different way by defining the exit area explicitly. We know the flow occurs over a fraction of the crater area, and we expect that to be around where the two flows interact. That's shown here in green on this diagram. We anticipate the lateral dimension of this interaction zone will be influenced by the crater width as flows forced sideways will interact with it before emerging. We also anticipate that this influence will recede over time as pressure and flow rate from the exposed pipelines drop. We therefore define the width of the source in terms of the crater width and also of the expanded diameter of the pipe outflow as shown here. For air entrainment, we've looked at a set of published CFD simulations of exactly this in crater interaction. And from that, we've derived a correlation that's a simple function of fracture length. Typically, the use of the defined area model gives the desired outcome, which is lower exit velocities compared with that of the cleaver model. Before we move on to the new dispersion model, it's worth taking a quick look at the specific conditions in which we need it. In higher wind conditions, we have a situation like we have in the top diagram here, where the vertical plume from the crater is bent significantly by the wind and we get touched down at some point downwind. There's no re-entrainment, no upwind spreading and standard UDM modelling has absolutely no problems handling this. In low wind conditions, the behaviour is somewhat different though, and that's what we see in the bottom diagram here. The wind has very little impact on the trajectory and we get this fountain-like behaviour, which is what we saw in the kosher case earlier. Now this is quite a complex flow with re-entrainment between the upward and downward flows, 
Uh, the CO2 rich mixture floods the crater, which means we don't get clean air entrainment there. We also expect circular spreading at ground level. This type of behavior is not well handled by the UDM, but it is what we hope the new gas blanket model goes some way to help us better represent. The gas blanket model in FAST 8.9 is specifically targeted to model these fountain type cases in low wind conditions. Now we don't explicitly model the fountain effect itself. Instead, we try to predict when we might see this type of behavior. And when we do, we represent the ground level behavior using an instantaneous cloud, which is what we've shown in the top diagram here. Mass is fed into the instantaneous cloud from the crater below while the cloud remains over the crater. The cloud will then spread in all directions while at the same time drifting downwind due to the background wind. When no longer over the crater, the remaining mass is handled by standard UDM modeling as shown in the bottom diagram here. Now we apply this gas blanket model when we expect um, a steeply descending plume. How do we predict that? Well, we do it by running an initial virtual observer using standard UDM modeling and the initial conditions from the crater. We trigger the gas blanket if the touchdown angle predicted by that initial run is more than 45 degrees below the horizontal. So on to validation. Here we present a comparison between FAST 8.9 in blue, FAST 8.71 in yellow with the velocity reduction. This is for the two kosher rupture experiments. The plot shows observed versus predicted arcwise concentrations. And by this, we mean we compare our maximum centerline concentration at a downwind distance with the maximum of any observed sensor concentrations at the same distance. In the plot, the center of the three lines is where the predicted concentration equals the observed the lines above and below are where the predicted is over or under by a factor of two. Now we see improved agreements with observations for FAST 8.9 here. There's less scatter and all the predictions are within a factor of two. We also see we now have predicted upwind concentrations which are explicitly shown here by the arrows. These are made possible by the new gas blanket model and are not included in the 8.71 analysis. This is another validation plot again for FAST 8.9 in blue and FAST 8.71 with the velocity reduction in yellow. This time we show pointwise concentrations for the two kosher experiments, which is simply a comparison between the observed and predicted values at each sensor location. Here we see significantly improved validation for FAST 8.9. There are much better predictions in the near field and across the concentration range. The increased spreading in the near field caused by the gas blanket model gives much better predictions at the extremes of the sensor array. Only four points out of the 64 here are outside of a factor of two, which really is an excellent performance. So where are the new models we've been talking about set as default in FAST 8.9? So first of all, let's consider CO2 buried pipeline ruptures. Now the validation for FAST 8.9 is significantly better than for FAST 8.71 for the available CO2 rupture experiments. So we've made them default settings in FAST 8.9. By that we mean the defined area and the gas blanket models will be automatically selected for any CO2 pipeline ruptures. It's worth noting that given the almost complete lack of experimental data, we've not applied the new models to punctures, just ruptures. For non-CO2 buried pipelines, the default settings remain as in FAST 8.71. The new models are available, but you have to explicitly go make them applicable to all buried pipeline ruptures.
So to summarize, based on the two kosher CO2 rupture experiments, FAST 8.71 and earlier are likely to underestimate concentrations. We released some interim advice to improve concentrations by using user-defined sources and dividing the initial velocity by a factor of three. In FAST 8.9, we've um, provided significant improvements to the modeling of these CO2 pipeline ruptures. Namely, we've introduced the defined area source model, which gives us a reduced velocity at the crater exit, and also the gas blanket dispersion model, which gives us a better representation of the near field spreading, particularly when steeply descending plumes are expected. These are now the default settings for CO2 pipeline ruptures, and they give excellent validation against the available experimental data.